Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 128, Teens and Procrastination. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my talented and dedicated co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? I'm all right. How about you? I'm very tired. We've been very tired for quite some time now. I guess I got to fix that camera angle there. Look at that. See, I changed the camera angle. And I didn't bother to double check it and shame on me. Let's fix it that way. Let's fix it that way. There we go. That's much better. Yay. I don't like having the bars on the side. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, we, uh, we almost didn't do a podcast today. Um, or this week, I should say. I was planning on getting back on regular schedule this week. We took a week off last week because we had a lot of stuff going on with marching band. And then we were just really tired this week. <laughs> a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. So um, we're back. We're off schedule. Today is Friday. Usually we record this podcast on Thursday, right? Yep. And we do our entertainment podcast on Wednesday, which we haven't done that yet, we'll be doing that this weekend, and um, we got one more week of one more band event coming up, and then after that, we should be back on our regular schedule. Yep. So that means we got to get cracking on show topics. Yep. But today we are talking about procrastination because I've been procrastinating doing show notes on other shows. <laughs> yeah. This is probably one we're all going to relate this to. Is, this is one that even the adults can probably relate to. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to be talking about what is procrastination and what are some of the downfalls of it, what causes procrastination specifically in teens, and then we'll discuss uh, all this and how parents can help their teens overcome procrastination. But before we do that, I would invite our listening and viewing audience to subscribe to the podcast, you can get audio versions of this podcast. I really wish I knew what that beeping was. That tells me that there's another UPS that's about to fail around here somewhere because I already replaced one of them. Anyway, you can get audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens. And you can get video versions of all of our podcasts listed as Insights into Things. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, uh, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon, and uh, pretty much any place you can get a podcast these days. I would also invite our audience to give us some feedback. We are always looking for new show topics that we can research and talk about uh, here on the show and help folks out with. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can get us on Twitter at insights underscore things. We are on Facebook, which isn't Facebook anymore. It's meta now. I have to update the show notes for that. But uh, you can get us at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. We are also on Instagram at instagram.com slash insights into things, or you can get links to all that and much more on our official website at www.insightsintothings.com. Are we ready to get started? Yep. All right. So what is procrastination? This definition comes to us from a website called barrennews.com. They say procrastination is a given side effect of being faced with work at any point in your life. It's the common behavior that leads teenagers into putting off homework, studying, 
or any other responsibilities for as long as possible. Little bouts of procrastination here and there are perfectly normal and acceptable. But when it reaches the point of being a genuine distraction, it can become costly. Teens typically use little distractions to put off their work to the point of denial, and once time actually reaches to get the project done, they rush to get everything accomplished in time. This constant cycle of delay and denial is one of the more mind common mindsets that teenagers put themselves under when it comes to procrastination. Ultimately, the deadline is a major factor in how much people procrastinate. A faraway deadline, as well as the need to avoid work, can lead to a natural reaction of putting off the assignment. As the deadline comes closer, the sudden threat of a due date is what sets off the stress to motivate yourself to finish. It's the deadline that gets people to get the urgent sense of motivation, but when procrastination gets too far, it's easy for the work to end up in poor quality. So let me ask you right off the bat, do you think you procrastinate? Um, uh, well... It's kind of an interesting way how I procrastinate because I feel I procrastinate on everything except schoolwork. Okay. Which is probably the opposite of what most people would normally expect of kids who procrastinate. Explain that. Like, I'm the type of person, we already went over the fact that I'm a perfectionist. Right. So... The thing is, because I'm a perfectionist, I normally prefer to get all my work done, especially considering the fact I'm in band now, and a lot of the time, I don't have a lot of time. So, I normally try to get my schoolwork done as soon as possible, so I don't, so one, I don't have to worry about it, and two, I get it done before I have band, when I actually have time to do it. That makes sense. Um, and of course, being the perfectionist, I always know that it would it might take me a bit longer to do these kinds of assignments, so I try and get it done as much as I can, um, and as soon as I can. Right. So, I definitely wouldn't say I procrastinate on schoolwork, but everything else, pretty much, yeah, I procrastinate. And I'll be honest with you, you know, I procrastinate too. Uh, most of the stuff that I do, I procrastinate on, but... It's done kind of with a different uh, mental mentality. Um, I, I prioritize things and I'm big on lists. So I'll have the things that I do on a routine basis. Let's stick to work for right now. So there are certain tasks that I have to perform at work on a regular basis. And what I prefer to do is to batch tasks together. You know, if I know that I'm going to be uh, pouring through help desk tickets and cleaning those up and sending reminders out, I'll do all those at one time rather than pick them off here and there. And then I'll break that time up by going through and doing other things. So I'll deliberately put things in little containers and then put them aside, knowing I have to do them, but knowing that there's a certain order that I'll do them in. Where I run into problems is when that schedule of containers gets upset by an emergency that happens or somebody interrupts me or the phone call comes in. Then I find myself trying to rejigger that little system I have to try to get everything back into order. Like everything, everything gets planned out and it doesn't all just get done at once real quick and then I'm sitting there twiddling my thumbs. Everything's done. I'll, I'll work on one container. I'll take a break and do something else. I'll work on the next container. I'll take a break and do something else. And I, it, it allows me that chance to mentally recharge between complex tasks. The problem is, you know, somebody will walk in my door and tell me the server is down. And all of a sudden, all my containers get kicked over and I can't work on any of that because I'm dealing with an emergency. Mm. Um, so that's just one of those things that I kind of have to deal with with the system that I have. So tell us about the problems with procrastination. So 
uh, the problems with procrast- uh, these problems with procrastination comes from a website called uh, counselingtoyou.com. And they said that there are two types of procrastination. There's resistant procrastination and refusal procrastination. Resistant procrastination is delaying a task until later, which often ends up being the, the last minute, but, se- but still finally getting the task done. Refusal procrastination is putting a task on permanent hold, pretending later will never come, and never completing the task. While many people practice the former from time to time, both forms of procrastination can be costly. For example, the delay caused by simply putting off what one dislikes or feels, fears, only lengthens the time one has to worry about getting the task done. Thus, procrastination creates more anxiety and stress than relief. The goal of procrastination may be to escape an immediate ob- obligation demand or need to or need to work. But there's a trap. It's a trap. Anyway, even if the task gets done in the end, procrastination adds to the stress and pressure of ordinary demands and causes them to take much longer than necessary. In the worst case scenario, teens and adolescents can get into what is known as catastrophic functioning. Catastrophic functioning is the use of delay and avoidance to create last-minute crises in order to motivate oneself to do whatever it is that must be done. In short, creating stress to enable accomplishment. And when catastrophic functioning becomes routine, discomfort, fatigue, burnout, and even breakdown are likely to follow. And that's a very good point, is that when you get into that point where everything's a crisis mode, it gets brutally exhausting because you're always doing some kind of fire drill and you can't get into that routine that you need to get into where you can conserve your energy and work smartly. So that that's one of the biggest problems with procrastination. And I find that I, I run into that around the house. Normally around the house, if there's something that needs to get done, like I've got a UPS that's sitting under the desk here, that I have to replace the battery on and put it back into place. I'm dreading having to do that because I'm going to have to completely rewire the area that I have to work in. I got to crawl around on the floor and it's, you know, exhausting and it's a pain in the butt to do. And it's one of those things that I just, it's an unpleasant task that I don't want to do. So it's one of those things that I will naturally put off as long as possible. Now we're sitting here now in the studio And one of the other UPSs is beeping. So that's going to be my crisis. That other UPS over there is probably beeping to let me know that the battery is probably getting ready to go. So instead of me being smart and putting the replacement battery in the one that I have here and replacing the one that's beeping, I'll wait until that one dies. Then that whole side of the studio is going to go out. Then it's going to be a crisis for me to do the work and get it done. Mm. that's with the motivation that I would have to have at that point. Ugh. And it's not the smartest thing to do. Yeah. But knowing, <laughs> knowing your limitations, I think is an important thing in this case here. I guess. So, uh, I think we've explored that about as far as we're going to get on this subject here. Yeah. Let's take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll talk about what causes procrastination. Alrighty. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Civ Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, 
Guild Lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. Today, we are talking procrastination. And considering this is episode 128, I think we've procrastinated long enough. <laughs> so what causes procrastination? Procrastination is not a behavior that's limited to teenagers. I, I'm a great example of that. I just admitted to that in the last segment. Yep. But why do both teens and adults procrastinate? So here's a few common examples of why we all procrastinate. We often delay tasks when we don't understand how long they take. I'm guilty of that. You know, I'll start on all, all the task and, you know, realize that it's going to take a lot longer than I originally thought and, and understand the mistake that I made. Those who suffer from anxiety or perfectionistic tendencies, which we talked about last week, often procrastinate as a means of coping with stress. A simple lack of motivation to start a task and being either unaware of or not caring about the consequences of inaction can lead to procrastination. Most parents of teens are all too aware of their teens' increased attempts to achieve self-empowerment by resisting parental authority. These efforts to resist parental authority take both active and passive form, active being argumentative and passive being a delaying action. What are some of the underlying reasons for procrastination? So psychologists suggest that the reasons for procrastination stem from four major underlying reasons, which include the following that come from psychology a website called psychologytoday.com. And the first we have is anger. Mm, hoax mash. The most common cause of procrastination is anger. Teens who resent the authority of parents and teachers can get even by delaying work or making a half-hearted effort. For adolescents who feel powerless, open rebellion is not an option because the consequences would be too great, and deep down, these teens want to succeed. This form of revenge is manipulative and passive-aggressive, but also highly effective because it takes authorities figures' power away and drives them crazy. Never mind that it is also self-sabotaging. A teen typically cares more about their author uh, their autonomy. autonomy than their grades. In essence, the opt-out is saying, you can't tell me what to do, I will work, I will work when I'm good and ready. The next we talk about is self-doubt. Oftentimes, beneath the anger and resentment is an individual consumed with self-doubt. Kids don't often start out feeling hopeless. It takes years of questioning their own skills, wondering whether they have what it takes. This is especially true of kids who have attention deficit hyperactive disorder or learning disabilities. Opt-outs often did better in school when they were younger. However, when school became more challenging, as it always does, rather than step up to the effort, they took their foot off the gas pedal. This is because they thought if school stopped being easy, it meant they were not smart enough. Trying was never an option because it involved the possibility of failing and then uncovering their perceived inadequacy. Playing the victim. Even though the pro procrastinator is imprisoned in a jail of their own making of their own making they see themselves as the victim of who of those who who's who set expectations and call the shots that was a hard sentence <laughs> it was perfectly fine when i was first reading it but now it isn't anyway they feel trapped in a no-win situation. Doing their work brings on uncomfortable feelings, but so does not doing it, though not, though just not now. The victim approaches homework feeling that they have to do it, never that they want to. The pattern goes something like this. Your child dislikes chemistry, but it's hanging over his or her head and freaks them out. Since they have... They haven't acquired skills in it. They can't do the assignments, so why try? 
Also, there's a test coming up, and he or she must do well on it, except they they know they can't. Suddenly, everything seems terribly unfair. The class is too hard, and the teacher angers them. He goes too fast. He doesn't like me. Hey, that was a good whiny voice. Thank you. In your defense, it's difficult to read this the way you are because I don't write these to be gender neutral. And you, in your infinite wisdom, want to portray them as gender neutral. So you're actually changing the script on the fly in your head. So I give you total props for that. Thank you. Especially when, like, you have, like, hasn't and hasn't doesn't work with theirs. So I'm like... Aren't. I know you had you you did a good job on that one. Thank your, you. Your your English teacher would be proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so the next thing that we talk about is perfectionism, which hey, we talked about. Yeah, that would make a good podcast. Yeah, we talked about that in our last podcast. A perfectionist may postpone starting a project because he feels overwhelmed by the sheer amount of energy it will take to do something perfectly. I don't feel obliged to make it gender neutral. I'm just going to read it the way it's written. Okay, sure. They will refer to words. They will they will refer to work with words like ought, must, have to, and should. You probably don't think of your teen as a perfectionist. If anything, they're the opposite. However, most perfectionists suffer from deep feelings of inadequacy. Their desires to make everything absolutely perfect may mask problems of self-esteem and self-confidence. And you're saying you're not turning it gender neutral. All right. Well, I'm trying. All right. (laughs) Okay. You're you're rubbing off on me. High standards are great. They give us something to aim for. Perfectionism takes hold when the failure to meet these expectations becomes unacceptable. Perfectionists who procrastinate set unrealistic expectations and then avoid work to rid themselves of the anxiety it causes. Though many adults procrastinate, for some teens, it's a sign of immaturity. Getting down to work involves postponing pleasure until work is done and being able to tolerate the anxiety and frustration that accompanies learning something new. You can hear your teens' low frustration tolerance when they say things like, this isn't fair, or it's too hard. That was my whiny, whiny voice. Eh, it could be whinier, but overall uh, it's not too bad. I'll have to whine more, that's all. So, let's just take a real quick second to look at some of these underlying reasons. Do you think any of these are what motivates you to procrastinate? Well, I definitely don't think I would relate to anger, because I really don't go against anyone. Um, I'm never really frustrated with the authority that people have over me, so okay. probably not that. Self-doubt is probably one of the ones I relate to more. Um, take, for instance, my art. That is definitely something I procrastinate on. Um, and the assignment for, and the super, well, not super secret, because I'm pretty sure we mentioned it on the podcast. Well, before. yeah, we have a, you know, every year the podcast does a, a, a holiday special, and this holiday special, we're going to be treated with custom artwork that Madison's going to be doing if she stops procrastinating and actually gets it done. Okay, leave it be. <laughs> now I can hopefully explain why I feel like it procrastinating. So the Grinch's style uh, is what we're going to be doing, and I'm kind of trying to base my art somewhat off of that. Uh, Dr. Seuss's style is very different from my own, considering the fact it's a lot more cartoony, The co- there are a lot less colors with it, and overall, it's a lot more busy than I would normally have my own drawings, because I normally draw self-portraits, just characters, just stuff like that. Right. So, I honestly got a lot of limitations for this. Colors was the main one, but honestly, that one I can kind of fix. But... Having to kind of work some of the caricatures in was definitely going to be a challenge. For one, there are a lot of full-body images, and I'm normally not used to making full-body images before. So that was something I kind of had to get used to and try doing. Right. Also drawing backgrounds. I don't really draw backgrounds all that much, so... uh, That's a new challenge, but the good thing is most of the backgrounds are kind of... 
Well, Dr. Seuss doesn't really draw too many backgrounds. And they're usually not terribly detailed. Yeah, so that was at least something I could avoid. Um, but some specific examples were like a side portrait of the one image that I was going to do. Where, right. uh, where Basically where the Grinch is looking down. I've never drawn a, si- a side portrait before. I've only ever drawn people looking front. So it was kind of interesting to kind of draw that, and that was actually kind of easy. But the one I'm holding off now is kind of a very busy image. It's one of the images of, like, all the who's together. The, the town shot. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's not really a town shot. It's just, like, them all playing with these weird toys because Dr. Seuss makes up a lot of weird toys in order yeah. to, you know, fit his rhymes. And I'm only really used to drawing characters, and it's going to be kind of hard to draw, like, all these weird, like, toys and such while still having to draw the caricatures. It's well, let me, let me ask you this. You've, you've not procrastinated on the whole project. You've made progress on it. Yeah. Ha- in, in doing what you've done so far and being challenged to do what you've done, has it helped you to expand as an artist and get better? Or well, has it just been so challenging that you're just gritting your teeth to get through it? Honestly, it really has helped me. For one, I've gotten slightly like more comfortable with full body images now, which I never thought I'd be able to do because I never usually like drawing legs, and now I feel like I might be able to draw legs more often. Uh, backgrounds, I've started getting slightly better at them because um, I have tried using backgrounds, and uh, they haven't really gone all that well. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh yeah, the side portrait. I actually really like how it came out. It's like the first ever time I even tried that, and I honestly think it looks really good, and like, is one of my favorite drawings right now, because it just looks really good. So has the success that you found and the challenges that you've tackled helped you to be less likely to procrastinate on the rest of the project? I mean, maybe, I'm still, you know, procrastinating on it, but I started gaining, you know, the new skills, and I definitely think if I do have to draw, like, more full-body stuff or more backgrounds or, like, more side portraits, I'd have a bit more confidence in myself to be a- to feel I could be able to draw it. Well, and that makes perfect sense. So the success that you've run into has helped to improve that level of confidence and and really overcome some of that self-doubt. So so this stuff does work. Wow. We're not just over here making it up. Yeah. Uh, Playing the victim, I don't think I've ever really done that. I don't really think playing the victim. You're not much of a victim. Yeah. Yeah. Perfectionism. (laughs) Yeah, I think we hit the nail on the head on that one. Yeah. And I think your self-doubt plays into your perfectionism, too. We kind of talked about that in the last podcast. Yeah. So I think if we can, we seem to be making progress on the self-doubt one with successes, little little bits of success here and there. And I think with that, that'll lead into your ability to address the perfectionism side of things. Yeah. So, and, and I'm sure we'll be able to overcome a lot of what we're talking about here. So let's take our last break, and then we'll come back and talk about how to help your team. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Well, 
welcome back to Insights in the Teens. Today we're talking about teens and procrastination. I almost said perfectionism. <laughs> I apologize. Luckily, I had enough sense to not. Good for you. Anyway, now we're going to be looking at how to help your teen with procrastination. Most of us first learn to procrastinate as a part of our attempts at self-empowerment and resisting authority during our early, our early adolescence, but it's a behavior that becomes more costly the longer it is practiced. Come late adolescence, routine procrastination is no longer about rebelling against parental and other external authority. It becomes an act of rebelling against one's own authority over one's oneself and results in either taking forever to do what one tells oneself to do or never getting it done at all. It can lay the foundation for much unnecessary adult lifestyle stress. Parents often try to help teens overcome procrastination by using a system of rewards and punishment. But thanks to the underlying reasons behind procrastination that we've already covered, these solutions rarely work as well as parents hope leaving both teens and parents confused and frustrated. So how can you help your teen to stop procrastinating if that's something he or she wants to do? Well, the first step is to recognize the problem. So you help your teen overcome procrastination by recognizing it, obviously. So pay attention to your teen's behaviors, especially when it comes to how they go about getting done what needs to be done. If your teen knows something needs doing but seems to avoid it altogether, they're procrastinating. Does your teen feel guilty? Are they exhibiting any signs of anxiety, stress, or depression? Procrastination can be both a cause of and a crutch for dealing with all of these feelings. Help your teen practice time management. As we discussed, one of the most common reasons for procrastination is simply not understanding how long tasks will take and how to budget our time accordingly. Help your teen prioritize his or her time so that it, is a pro that it is as productive as possible, and include time for play. This may include helping them break down large or, comple or complex projects into manageable tasks making use of a calendar or planner, and setting objectives as goals each night for the next day. You need to make sure the goals are clear and come from your teen. Teens need to take ownership of their goals and want to achieve them in order to get to the work done and not procrastinate. Look for personal difficulties. If helping your teen learn time management skills isn't enough, there may be something else going on. Remember, those suffering from anxiety and perfectionistic tendencies often procrastinate as a means of coping with stress. Peer pressure, low self-esteem, divorce, a death in the family, alcohol or drug abuse, ADHD, financial problems at home, and a whole host of other issues may result in your teen's procrastination. If your child is experiencing anything or exhibits any personality traits that may underlie their procrastination, support them and help them overcome those things, including seeking the help of a teen counselor or a psychologist. Help your teen find their motivation. Motivation comes easily when a person is doing something that's important to him or her. And if your teen isn't motivated to complete a task, procrastinate it. Procrastinating that task is a likely outcome. This is the one place where rewards can be helpful. If the task a teen must complete isn't important, work with your teen to create a reward for completing the task that your teen wants. Let your teen experience the consequence of procrastination. If all else fails, let your teen fail. Now that sounds counterintuitive, I know. Though it may be hard to do, allowing your teen to experience the negative outcomes of procrastinating may be the best way for him or her to learn a valuable lesson and become more responsible. Letting your teen suffer the negative consequences of his or her inaction may be just what they need to recognize that their what their behavior is and it needs to change. Each time your teen procrastinates, just begin the task a little sooner than normal. Instead of fighting the habit, start a new one. 
let him or her procrastinate only slightly less than normal by moving up to the by moving up the starting time. As the old habit of procrastination is slowly worn away, your teen will be able to practice better time management, be more productive, and experience less stress and more free time. And as they do, be sure to ask them how they feel and help them reflect on their newfound peace of mind, which is actually something I've never really heard of doing, and it actually sounds kind of interesting. There you go. See, this stuff does work. Teen procrastination can be a vicious cycle and a difficult problem to solve. However, with persistence, patience, and support, you can help your teen take ownership of both his or her successes and failures, overcome procrastination, and move forward into adulthood with self-confidence and optimism. So what do you think works best for you to overcome your procrastination? Um, let's see... Um, I guess a lot of the times it's kind of just finding my motivation. Um, that's kind of how I do with a lot of my creative stuff, like with the drawings. A lot of the times it kind of takes me on, it kind of takes me a minute to like motivate myself to actually want to do the drawings. Like, there's like some spark in me that goes off like, oh, hey, maybe I should be getting this done. Like I have ideas or something like that. Or like, this is how I want to represent this. Or like I come up with an idea and that's kind of what my motivation would be. Thus that motivates me to get my idea and basically complete it. So your solution really is a self-initiated form of motivation then? Most of the time, yeah. Are there any external forces that motivate you? Is it deadlines? Is it mommy or daddy breathing down your neck about it? Is it your teachers? What, what from an external perspective tends to uh, motivate you to get things done? Well, deadlines are definitely good motivators for me. Um, you guys breathing down my neck is also a pretty good motivator because – like, you know, whenever you say I probably should be doing something that like, okay, you know, maybe I should get this thing done. But do they serve kind of, are they more reminders or are they motivators to you? They almost sound more like they're reminders. That beeps getting angrier and angrier. Yeah. Um, well, a lot of the time, de I, you, they may be reminders, but. I tend to use them as motivators for the most part. Okay. Like deadline. That's no, that is a reminder that I need to get it done. But knowing that I need to get it done, I use that I use that drive to motivate me in order to get it done so that I can meet that deadline. Okay. That makes sense. Whatever works. You guys beating down my neck about something is a reminder that I should probably get that thing done. Because I don't want you people annoying me about it. Aha, uh -huh. see? Me being annoying is constructive. I knew sure, it. Sure, <laughs> we'll go with that. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what? Whatever it takes to get it done, right? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, parents can help their kids out with this, with calendars, with subtle reminders, with providing the technology needed to track things. By helping you out, you know, I love doing projects with you. If you get school projects and stuff, I like doing that. And, and maybe that's a good motivator. Anything, you know, but, but I think it's one of those things that parents kind of have to instill that in their, in their kids at an early age. So I think that was about it. Uh, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll get your closing remarks and finish up the business of the podcast. All righty. Be right back. Alrighty, so to everyone out there, I just want to say that procrastination is entirely normal. I'm pretty sure most people go through it, and although it is definitely a very annoying uh, problem to have to deal with, it can be fixed like most problems. Um, as long as you're able to get the drive in order to help you succeed, whatever it may be, I definitely would recommend finding some type of motivation motivation or find some way in order to help you stop procrastinating and if you do procrastinate once in a while that's totally fine as long as you don't make a habit out of it you should be fine all right 
Uh, sage advice as always. And I'm cutting my head off there now. Look at that. What is going on with that? Like it keeps moving around. Mm. It's weird. Anyway, I think that was it. Before we do go, I would once again invite our listening and viewing audience to subscribe to the podcast. Audio versions of the podcast can be found listed as insights into teens. Video versions of the podcast are listed as insights into things. We're available on Pandora, Castro, Stitcher, Podbean, Buzzsprout, Amazon Music, and pretty much any place you can get a podcast these days. I would also invite you to give us your feedback. We are looking for show uh, suggestions, feedback on how we're doing. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can hit us on Twitter at uh, insights underscore things. On Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. On Instagram at instagram.com slash insights into things. We do stream five days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. Or you can get us on our official website at insights into things.com. And you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights into Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother Sam. Well done. That's it. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye.